Mika Tamaris and I work uh, in the University of Granada in the Department of Experimental Psychology and I'm interested in studying the cultural evolution of language. Many people think of language evolution as the evolution of humans, the biological evolution of humans, in order to acquire the capacity to produce language, to understand language, to learn language, um, language being this um, complex communication system that we have. Um, but we can also think of evolution of language in terms of the cultural evolution of language. Language itself has evolved uh, when we humans use the language and transmit the language to following generations. So another, um, another meaning of evolution of language would be the evolution of languages uh, in over historical times. I think the evolution of language can be taken at many different levels. So in one way where we could almost Mm, not map totally uh, the elements from biology onto, onto language, but we can closely use methods from population, genetics, and so on. Is if we look at little elements of language, let's say words, for his sake, and how they evolve over time, in the sense, and here evolution would be how they different words change their frequencies over time. So let's say we have several ways of expressing an idea. Well, some ways will be, will be very common at one point in time, then they will disappear. New ways of expressing the same idea will come in place. So we have evolution in that, in that sense. Um, so at that level of analysis, I think that is one de definition of evolution, change in the proportions in the population, and that's clearly applicable in the case of units of language. Um, also, uh, as I was uh, mentioning earlier, there's another dimension, not just the historical dimension of how languages change, the, frequency, the frequencies change, but also of how through usage and through um, l new people coming, in, new children learning the language, um, we leave our mark, we leave our, um, our footprint on the, on the structure of languages. And this is another, a different level of evolution and perhaps it's not so similar to the biological one, but again, there is information transfer, there, is, um, there are pressures going on, there are um, cognitive pressures, we have preferences, we like to, to it's, it's easier for us to pronounce some things versus others, it's easier for us to process certain syntactic structures, certain grammatical um, structures than others, so those will be preferred over others, and that, so that at that level as well I think we can talk about um, evolution through some kind of selection, very similar to natural selection, and of course as well neutral, random changes are going on at the same time. If we think of evolution as a process of change over time, we have some kind of information and it changes over time, um, we have that one obvious system that undergoes this, this, this process of evolution is biology. We have biological evolution. Another one would be language. But language uh, is, is one cultural system. There are many other cultural systems. Um, cultural traditions of every kind have been studied as, as, as evolutionary systems. I think there have been many attempts to model cultural evolution a little bit on, uh, on biological evolution, to take the elements, the, the processes, the, the, all the knowledge that has been developed over years and years and years in biology, to try and adapt those to, to culture. And they've not always been successful. Um, and I think that's very controversial because many models have tried to be too faithful to, to the elements in biology. So they've tried to say, okay, in biology we have phenotypes and genotypes, therefore what are the cultural phenotypes and genotypes? Or we have um, units of transmission like genes. What, are the, what would be the cultural equivalent of genes? And so, as I said, not all, this hasn't always been very successful. Uh, and perhaps it's because we have to look at biology see what they've done, see how they've analyzed the system, and then with that in mind, because it's very useful and it's extremely uh, hard work has gone into it, then we look at culture, 
And inspired by that, and also by our, our field of culture, and by what linguists and other anthropologists, etc., have done, try to come up with, a, with a, a framework that explains cultural evolution in its own terms. So if something from biology, from the, 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 bio, the evolutionary analysis of biology is useful for us, excellent, we know about it, we can adopt it, we don't need to reinvent it. But um, many, perhaps some, we have to be cautious that some concepts perhaps won't be useful, won't be applicable, and they, there might be concepts that are useful, but we have to adapt them and there will be concepts that will, will be purely cultural and we really, there really is no equivalent in, in biology. So biology shouldn't be our only source of, of inspiration. I think um, uh, there are other, other places that we could look at and, and just start knowing our subject, knowing your languages, knowing your, your, your uh, linguistics or your anthropology really helps if you have a, um, an evolutionary frame, framework to think about it, like for example the fact that we have a, a repertoire of sounds, discrete sounds in each language, or the fact that uh, languages are regular, that we have syntax, that we have, we have morphology. All these things can emerge by, through purely cultural um, processes, especially learning by new speakers. So um, computational models have been a great uh, aid to, to answer questions um, also in terms of modeling the, 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 spread, of the spread of variance in, in overpopulations. It has been very important to, to, to have this tool because there are some questions that you cannot answer with experiments, that you cannot answer experimentally. Um, for example, if you want to, to test how does a, a language spread over a big population? It would be very difficult to do experiments. There are, there are observations that you can do in, the, in real languages, but it is very useful to be able to simulate that, for example, with the computers. One important thing we can model with computer simulations is precisely this process of transmission that I keep talking about. We can model agents that learn a language and then they produce this language and then this language is learned by another agent and this is repeated over many many generations and we can observe languages um, evolve change over time over these transmission chains in fact this can be done easily and it has been done with experiments as well but what's interesting about the computer models is, is that it allows you to do this with a big population you can have many agents learning a language then new children coming in being born into the population the adults coming out and you can vary the dynamics of the population, you can also vary the, the, the structure of the, of the social network, and all these little things, these are all parameters that may have an impact on the final result, on the structure of, of the languages that are produced.